Hello, very good morning again. So uh, once again, it's me, Mr. Chu, presenting uh, Chapter 6B, Acid-Base and Solubility Equilibria, where this part we are going to discuss for essay questions, okay? So before we begin, as usual, if you like my video, please help me to click the like button. And if you want to receive further notification, do subscribe to my channel and click the notification, the bell button, uh, in order for you to receive the latest information for the videos that are uploaded. Okay, so let's, without any hesitation, begin our lesson for today. So uh, we are going to have a look at the question for the essays and answer accordingly. Number one, lactic acid, which is a monoprotic acid, is one of the components found in the sour milk. When 25 centimeter cube of lactic acid for an unknown concentration is titrated against sodium hydroxide 0 0.0500 mole per decimeter cube, the following information will obtain. So you have all the volume of NaOH added, you have the pH. So number one, define pH. So, uh, and then B, based on the table above, plot the graph of pH value against the volume of sodium hydroxide added to the mixture. So now, when you want to define pH, actually the definition of pH is pretty simple. Just simply write uh, pH is equals to negative log of H plus. If you want to define in words, then you just explain in words saying that it is a negative logarithm of concentration of hydrogen ion. So uh, if you want to secure both definitions, so you might as well write the formula and also write in words. Okay, for us, it's the same. Okay. Okay, then B, based on the table, plot the graph. So you expected your graph to look like this. Okay, so uh, remember to put your axis as the pH. Uh, so this is the graph of pH against the uh, volume of the uh, sodium hydroxide. Yeah? So you have to label accordingly. Usually in the graph, if there is three marks, uh, first mark goes to the axis, uh, second mark goes to the plotting, and then third mark goes to the curve. Okay, so you have to write accordingly. Yeah? Centimeter cube. Okay, so this is how you should get the three marks for the graph in here. Okay. Okay. Then C from the graph sketch in D number one, calculate the concentration of the hydrogen ion before the titrations begin. And then number two, determine the Ka of the lactic acid, justify your answer. Number three, using the endpoint of the titration curve, calculate the concentration of the lactic acid and suggest an indicator suitable for the titration. Okay, so let's start from the calculation of the concentration of hydrogen ion. So uh, because this is a uh, uh, monoprotic acid, so you use a uh, 2.5 is equal, because you look at the graph, huh? the graph start at 2.5 here. So this is when your concentration is equal to zero. Then you use a uh, square, uh, you use, uh, you use uh, this uh, 2.5 is equal to negative of H plus or H plus is 10 power of negative 2.5, press your calculator. That is how you calculate the, the concentration of hydrogen ion, 3.16 and 10 power of negative three mole per decimeter cube. So you need, don't forget, huh? must write out the unit. Okay, okay, number two, determine the K of the lactic acid, justify your answer. So if you back from the graph in here, so where is the K? So since this is the end point, uh, this is the end point of the graph. So in the end point of the graph, all you have to determine is half of the end point. So let's say if your end point is 15, okay, so your uh, end point should be half of it. So half of it is 7.5. So 7.5 is here. And then you, you 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 align it with the line here. So you should get somewhere in between 3.9, 3.8, 3.9. Now, because the scale that I use in this graph is quite big, so uh, I will expect you all to get a better graph with your own graph paper. Okay. So this is based on what I see on in here. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so uh based on the graph in here, mm, you can see that uh the the pk is equals to uh, Four, okay, 3.9, 3.8 to 4, okay, all are accepted, okay. Okay, so uh, in here, that is how you are going to justify your answers in here. Huh? Okay, and then number three, using the end point of the curve, calculate the concentration of the lactic acid. So uh, you use MAVA MA, MA equals to A over MBBB equals to B. So uh, you substitute accordingly, MA is times 25 divided by MB 0 0.05 times 15 centimeter cube. So you get your concentration of MA is 0 0.300. And finally, suggest an indicator suitable to be used uh, for the titration. So you can use bromotimo blue. 
uh, which changes from yellow to green to blue, or you use phenolphthalein, which change to colorless, light pink to purple. So you must actually memorize one of these indicator color. So for conveniences, I usually advise students to memorize for phenolphthalein, which is the most convenient. But one of the disadvantages if you memorize for phenolphthalein is that uh, when it comes to uh, strong acid weak base titration, strong acid weak base titration, then you cannot use phenolphthalein. So the safest one is still memorize the color changes of bromotimol blue here okay so just try your best to memorize it okay okay so that is for question number one so immediately we go to question number two a mixture of aqueous ammonia nh3 and aqueous ammonium chloride nh4 is an example of buffer solution number one define what is a buffer solution so buffer solution is a solution where the ph does not change much when a little acid or base is added then number two, using suitable equation, explain how buffer solution works when a little hydrochloric acid and little sodium hydroxide is added to buffer solution. So this one, try your best to explain as fully as you can. Huh? So you, first of all, you have to write both equations, NH3 plus H2O give NH4 plus plus OH minus. And then the other one is NH4Cl dissociate to give NH4 plus plus Cl minus me for my uh, typing error in here. Sorry for that. So uh, this is the beginning point where you have to uh, explain all this. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, in here, what happened when the little acid is added? So when the little acid is added, the H plus will react with the OH minus from here. So as a result, when the concentration of the OH minus decrease, equilibrium in number one shift to the right. So when you shift to the right, it will counter the loss of the OH minus uh, reacted in the liquid reactions in here. Okay. However, when a little base is added, so OH minus, uh, OH minus will react with the NH4 plus to form back NH3 plus H2O. So basically the OH minus inside the uh, solution is not disturbed. So that is basically how the buffer solution works in here. Okay. Okay, B, a mixture of ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate may be also form an acid leak buffer solution. Given the K of ethanoic acid is 1.78 and 10 power negative 5, 1. Derive the following expression from the ethanoic acid ethanoic system mixture, where your pH is equals to pKa minus log CH3COH over CH3CO minus 2 marks. And then number 2, calculate the H2O plus of 1.0 decimeter cube buffer solution, preparing by dissolve 1.0 mole per decimeter cube ethanoic acid and 1.0 mole of this uh, CH3CO and then in the sufficient amount of water three mark. And finally, calculate the pH of a buffer solution to when 1.0 of barium hydroxide is added to the equation, right equation for the reaction four marks. Okay, so in here, you have to learn how to derive. Uh. So first of all, you have to write the expression for the dissociation, CH3COH plus H2O gives CH3CO minus and H2O plus. So your K is equal to CH3CO minus times H2O plus over CH3COH. Or you re-express the equation to become H2O plus equals to KA times CH3CO CH3CO minus over COH. Then um, I think wait, 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 wait. Uh, there is a slight mistake in here. Sorry, can you pardon me for a while? I'm so sorry yeah, because I accidentally write wrongly in here. But it's supposed to be CH3COOH and CH3COO minus. Pardon me, yeah, pardon me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's supposed to be like this. Huh? Okay, then this one also the same, CH3COOH, okay, pardon me for the mistakes, okay, and then you have to negative it here, okay, okay so you negative log the equation to become negative log of HCO plus minus negative log of Ka minus the negative log of CH3COH, finally you get your answer, Negative log of CH3COOH. <laughs> Sorry for that. Huh? Okay. Uh, over CH3CO minus. Okay, I pardon it for the mistakes that I made. So please, please pardon me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that is how you derive the equation from there. Okay, two marks on it. Okay, number two, calculate the HCO plus of 1.0 buffer solution prepared by dissolving 1.0 uh, ethanol acid and 1.0. 
this uh, sodium ethanoate. So you use pKa equals to uh, negative log 1.8 times 10 power negative 5. pKa is 4.75. So pH is equals to 4.74 minus negative log 1.0 over 1.0. So you get your answer of pH is 4.7 in two significant figure. Two significant figure. How we know that it's two significant figure? If you look carefully, here has two. Here also have two, here also have two. So all of them uses two significant figure for your final answer, okay? Okay, then number three, calculate the pH of the buffer solution when 1.0 sodium hydroxide. So since viral hydroxide is associated to here, become Ba2 plus plus 2 OH minus, since hence OH minus produced will be 0 0.2. So mole of H plus react with the OH minus will be 1.0 minus 0 0.2, you get 0 0.8. So what will it become? It will become salt. So the salt in here will become 1.0 plus 0 0.2, you get 1.2. So uh, you reapply to the equation, pH is equal to 4.74 minus log 1.2 divided by 0 0.80. So press your calculator, you also get 4.9 in two significant figure. Okay, so this is how you should solve for question number B3. Okay, so hopefully you all can understand. Huh? Okay, so that is for question number two. Then we go to question number three. Boric acid BOH3 is an antiseptic found in some common eye wash. In the next one, boric acid acts as a Lewis acid. So define Lewis acid. So be using suitable molecular structure and equation. Explain why the acidity of the acidic properties of the boric acid. So what is a Lewis acid? Lewis acid is a lone pair electron acceptor. So um, in here, how do we express? So since boron atom has uh, empty 2p orbitals. Huh? So what does it mean in here? That means in your energy level diagram, huh? uh, inside your energy level diagram, you have the force, uh, uh, this uh, barium act as the, this one. Let me draw for you. So this is the energy level. So you should have this, um, this is the 2s and this is the 2p. Okay. Draw for you in order to help you to understand better. Okay. Okay. So in here, uh, you have the structure of the uh, acid looks like this. So this is two S two two P one. This is the ground state, isn't it? So when it is excited, okay. So uh, you will notice that uh, when it is excited, the uh, S and P orbitals will eventually have one single electron field in. Okay, and then the other one is empty. Okay, so this is your 2s and this is your 2p. Okay, okay then uh, this is an excited state. So uh, after the excited states in here, okay, it comes to the hybridized state. So uh, boron in the boron hydroxide in here uses one of the 2s and two of the 2p in here to form what we so called as an sp2 hybridization. So you have one empty, uh, you have one empty this uh, pz orbitals available in here. So this pz orbitals is the one that allows the lone pair electrons to uh, accept the electron pair, hence becomes the Lewis acid in here via coordinative bond. Okay. Okay, so that is how you're going to explain for this one. So, uh, which accept the lone pair electron from the Lewis acid. So, we'll water act as a Lewis space. So, using coordinative bond or dative bond. So, this is the equation BOH3 plus H2O give BOH4 minus plus H plus. So, uh, this will help you to understand uh, in this case how boric acid act as a Lewis acid, not as a bronsted lowry acid. Because in bronsted lowry acid, you tend to donate proton. But in this case, it's not. Donating proton is accepting electron pair. Okay, so hopefully you all can understand by using the diagram that helps you in here. Okay, so that is how you explain the acidity of the boric acid in here. Okay, then we continue with number B here, 3B. Okay, so phenol CCH5OH is a weak organic acid. A solution containing 0 0.385 gram of phenol in 2.00 decimeter cube of water has a pH 6.29. So as you can see in here, all of them are in three significant figures. So later when you have calculation part, the final answer should also be three significant figures. So number one, explain why phenol is a weak organic acid. So first of all, you have to define what is a... Uh, uh, acid in here. So bronsted lowry acid is a proton donate. So phenol dissociate partially in water according to this equation. Okay, so this explains why phenol is a weak acid. 
And then number two, calculate the dissociation constant of the Ka. So pH is equal to negative log of H plus. So you use uh, anti log, lah, okay? Uh, anti log of 6.29. So you get 5.13 times 10 power negative 7 mole per decimeter cube. So uh, you use concentration C. Concentration C is equal to mass over, mo uh, mass over molar mass divided by the volume 2.00. So you get your concentration equals to 2.05 times 10 power negative 3. Okay. Then you use K is equals to square root of Ka times C. Okay. Or simply 5.13 times 10 power negative 7 square root of K like this one. So you get your K is equals to 1.28 times 10 power negative 10 mole per decimeter cube. So that is how you calculate the dissociation constant for acids in here. Okay. Okay, number four, define solubility product constant, KSP. So KSP is an equilibrium constant for the concentration of product ion in a saturated solution at a constant temperature. So B, milk of Malaysia is a suspension of MgOH2 in water uh, in which the, in which the what? The aqueous is saturated MgOH2. Calculate the solubility of water at room temperature given to you. The KSP is 1.2 times 10 power negative 11 more cube decimeter negative 9 at the room temperature. So first you have to write the dissociation equation. That is always a must. So MgOH2 solid give Mg2 plus aqueous plus 2OH minus aqueous. So in this case, uh, when you write the dissociation constant for KSP, you must include the state of matter. Uh, I stressed this for a few times already. So hope that you all will pay attention to this. Then you have KSP equals to Mg2 plus times OH minus square. So uh, eventually when you dissociate, so this one is X and this one will become 2X. Uh. In other words, stoichiometrically, one magnesium hydroxide is forming one magnesium ion plus two hydroxide ion. So if this is X, so magnesium will become X and 2X in here. Uh. So that is why at the end you have X times 2X squared. Okay, so when you X times 2X squared, you get your X is equals to 1.4 times 10 to negative 3 mole per decimeter cube. Then you have C, H2S is passed into the aqueous solution containing 0.1 of lead nitrate and 0.1 of zinc nitrate until precipitate starts to form. What is the precipitate? Show how you obtain your answer. So lead 2 sulfide will be first precipitate. Why? Because KSP of the PBS is smaller than lead and S. Any product of Q in the PBS will first reach where Q equals to KSP. So that is why you will first observe the um, lead, sulf um, lead sulfide first. Okay. Okay, then number D, explain as fully as you can. The solubility of the lead 2 chloride in water decreases when dilute hydrochloric acid is added, but increase when the concentration of the concentrated hydrochloric acid is added. So this is a very uh, application thing. Sir. So uh, I'm just straight away going to explain to you what is the effect when you add lead 2 hydroxide uh, with dilute HCl and concentrated HCl. So when you add dilute HCl, okay, so concentration of the Cl minus increase. So when concentration of the Cl minus increase, equilibrium will shift to the left. So when equilibrium shifts to the left, so you form more PbCl2. As a result, the solubility decrease. However, for the case of the concentrated Cl minus, so when concentrated Cl minus is added, the Pb2 plus will react with the 4 Cl minus to form the complex of PbCl2. PVCl42 minus. So as a result, PV2 plus concentration will decrease. So when concentration of PV2 plus decrease, equilibrium shift more to the right, increasing the solubility. So this is a very uh, this is a very application part in here where you have to memorize uh, the reasoning uh, behind the what happened when dilute HCl and concentrated HCl is added. Okay, so uh, you can only memorize this. So Try your best. Huh? Okay, then number two, aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide is added slowly to lead two nitrate. White precipitate is formed initially but dissolved in sodium hydroxide to form a colorless solution. Okay, so white precipitate forms since PbOH2 is formed according to the equation Pb2 plus plus 2H minus gives PbOH2. However, when excess OH minus is added, the PbOH2 stops start to dissolve to form complex ion according to the equation PbOH2 plus 4OH minus keep PbOH4 6 4 minus. So uh, this is more towards inorganic chemistry part but uh, in here because we are discussing about solubility of the substances and what are the factors that will influence them. So uh, this is the application part of how uh, we say that if you still remember there is an experiment 
in your form four, what happened when sodium hydroxide is added to lead ion? So you said that white precipitate dissolve in excess. So this is the theoretical part. Why is it that white precipitate dissolve in excess? Okay. Okay, so I believe that is all for the essay question part that I would like to discuss with you today. And that is all for chapter six B. So we are going to continue tomorrow with our lessons for 6C, our final chapter for semester one. So stay tuned and I'll see you all around. Thank you very much.